Women with Disabilities Victoria, empowering women. Our right to safety and respect. This video is about getting safe from violence and abuse. Parts of the video may be upsetting. If you need support or want to speak to someone, call 1800 RESPECT or 1800 7377 328. We suggest you use the video guide as you watch the video. I love working at Women with Disabilities Victoria. I've been here a while because um, I work with women like myself who have a disability and we are all have that common experience, but we're all different. So um, some of us live in a small country town, some of us live here in Melbourne. Um, we're all different ages, um, we speak different languages, some of us sign, some of us speak other languages and come from different countries. Some of us are attracted to men, some are attracted to women, some of us are attracted to both. And so we're very diverse and that's wonderful. We have different experiences of life. And I think it's really important for us to know what it is that makes us feel good about ourselves. What is it that helps me feel safe? And what is it that stops me feeling safe? We know that some people don't respect our right to be safe. Some people do um, seek to exert power and control over, um, over women. Uh, it's often men. And, and it's not just women with disabilities that experience that um, disadvantage. I think it's really important for all of us to find someone that we can trust and um, to know that violence is never okay. We don't have to put up with it. Um, it's not the fault of someone who experiences violence, it's the fault of someone who's perpetrating it. We all need to be in control of ourselves and our life. We all need to be in equal relationships and to be respected. And for women with disabilities, that's particularly important because we can also experience disadvantage because of our disabilities. You know, we might be dependent on a family member or a partner or a service provider um, for practical support. And that can put us a bit out of control. And if somebody takes advantage of that, then we're in an unsafe situation. We can experience abuse um, or somebody wanting to control what happens in our life. These women, I celebrate them. I think they're wonderful. You know, it can be distressing and sad to hear their stories. It can be good to watch this video with somebody. Therese spent years in an abusive relationship with her ex-partner. I felt that my children's safety was in jeopardy because if something happened to me, um, I was terrified of what he would do to the children because he had made threats. Jane experienced institutional abuse from the age of six and domestic violence as an adult. One night there was nine staff that went to the pub. One staff looked after 80 kids. And I said, can I go to bed? I want to go to bed. He goes, I'm going to take you up there. So he took me up there. He watched me get undressed. He had a little play around with me. He said, don't ever tell anybody this, what you've done to me. My partner's brother used to use me as well and have skits um, six out of me as well, and I was too scared to tell people. Started at 36, the domestic violence, until I left him. And I was too scared because he knew that he had a barrow over me because I was having fits and I was too scared to go to people because I thought they would not believe me because of the institutional days. Sam was stalked and harassed by a support worker. He would wait until there was nobody at my house and come visit me. I didn't feel safe at all. I was trying to get help the best way I could and nobody was listening to me. What is violence and abuse? Some of the things that people might be doing without you realising they're doing it is control. 
over your over your money where you go what time you come home what time you go to bed stuff like that what is family violence Family violence can be different things. It can be physical, when someone hurts you or is rough with you. Sexual, when someone has sex with you when you do not want to or makes you touch private parts when you don't want to. Verbal, when someone says or does things that make you feel bad and afraid. It can be financial, when someone spends all of your money or doesn't let you have your money. It can be social, where someone stops you from leaving your home or seeing your family and friends. Family violence can be physical, sexual, verbal, financial, social. Who might use family violence against us? Family violence can come from lots of people. For example, it could be a partner, ex-partner, a parent, a child, a brother, a sister, a step-family member, grandparent, uncle or auntie, or a carer or fellow resident who is like a family member, or another person you think of as family because of your culture for example, an elder. People hurt by family violence can be afraid to talk about the violence and ask for help. Family violence is against the law and it's not okay and no one should be hurt or feel afraid. Sexual assault. Sexual assault is against the law. It's when someone tries to or has sex with you when you do not want to or tries to make you do sexual things like touching their body when you do not want to. It can also be where someone tries to touch your private body parts when you don't want them to. Sexual assault is when someone tries to or has sex with you when you don't want them to, touches your private body parts when you don't want them to, or tries to make you do sexual things you don't want them to. Other types of violence or abuse may be caused by prejudice, because of a person's particular characteristics such as gender, sexuality, religion, race, age or disability. Prejudice motivated crime is violence and abuse that is used against you because of gender, sexuality, religion, race, age or disability. These crimes could include damage to your property, verbal abuse or harassment, threats or physical assault. Police want to know about these acts because we know that this kind of violence makes people feel more isolated and vulnerable. What helps keep us safe and respected? So Marie, you're a disability advocate. What would your key message be for women with little or no speech? I would have a secret word with a trusted person who would know that meant I needed help immediately. Women may need help to identify who they can trust and to find people who care and take the time to understand. Women need to have communication that can be independent from the people they rely on for day-to-day -day support. If the person yells or refuses to communicate with the assistant, maybe quietly ask why. It's important to listen to women with disabilities because we have good ideas about our right to be safe. Not just rights in relation to their disability, but also women's rights. Safety and the right to be safe is not just about not being hurt, it's also about health and proper care. The Enabling Women Program so the program is a women's program for women with disabilities. It's a program to empower and enable the women to, to learn to gain confidence as well as to make friends, um, to be more involved with their community, to learn to make change and to lobby for change. Because they are a group of women who are at risk within the community. So the women hear about the program from each other but also from the local community houses. Each of the towns generally have a community house, which is a really good network. As well as that, there's the women's health networks, and it's a very wide network, so it's all across the region. So that sort of helps women to not be socially isolated and to be more involved with their communities. 
What can we do to get help if we feel unsafe? It's important to let your doctor know. They um, have the resources available to network you in with places that can help you. Obviously, when you're leaving a situation, money is an issue. Um, so if you go through your doctor, he can provide you with referrals to psychologists that don't cost a load of money and things like that. Only a friend only recently told me, recently told me about the victims of crime. That would have been amazing to help me when I moved because, you know, they can offer you financial assistance to help you get out. And so I had no idea. So I, like, used all my holiday pay, everything. Like, and I, we came up here with nothing. But there was actually these resources available if I had been told. There are services out there that I know about now that I didn't know about before. So if you're afraid to speak, try and get someone to get the help for you. The hospital actually got mental health services involved, which I was given a um, access to domestic violence support people to actually kickstart that process of recovery. You need to talk to someone who is objective and has the skills to... Um, direct you in the right way and support you in the right way. I got my parents involved in the end and mum said to me, why didn't you say something to me? And I'm like, I thought that the organisation was going to listen to me without using, without needing my parents to speak for me because I don't like people speaking for me. But in the end I had to because I felt like I was hitting a brick wall. Someone else got sexually assaulted by him first before they listened to me. The first fight we had, I gave him a chance. The second fight, what I started doing, telling people around Cranbourne and what was going on, there was another fight after that and that was the third one. That was the one where it was real big. And I left him that next day because I said to him, I'll see you tonight, Dal. I love you. And I had my piece of paper writing things down and I had my bags of stuff next to my door. And um, when I went to Melbourne, I was that furious and angry, very angry. Jan, who's a good friend of mine, and I trusted her, and she goes, Jane, if you want to, you can stay at my place for two weeks. And I told Jan all about it, and she read the 12 pages back to front, upside down, what was going on. And I said, I want to see the police. How can we report violence and abuse to police? To report a crime to police, you can, in the case of an emergency, call triple zero, attend a police station, telephone a police station, contact Crime Stoppers by telephone or online. Crime Stoppers pass on this information to police. You can report a crime yourself or get someone to help you. Police will ask you if you need support to communicate and can contact a support person or interpreter for assistance. What happens when we report violence and abuse to police? After you've reported a crime and told police what happened, they might start an investigation. This means that they will take a statement that is written or video recorded, get evidence such as witnesses, fingerprints, clothing and photos, and if they can, they'll talk to the person who is the suspect. How do we recover from violence and abuse? They found out that there was a vacancy at the Sacred Heart Mission in St Kilda. They said, would you like to go there? And I said, definitely, yes. So I was there for six months. And once there was a vacancy that came up, they said, would you like to see this room? And I said, definitely. So I went to the room and I go, and they said, you'll share the laundry, but everything else will be yours. And I go, definitely, I'd love to stay here. And ever since I've been in that place, I have actually felt free as a bird at last. And my health has been great. I have not had no stress, pressure, um, people talking for me. I've, had a, I've been strong and I've been powerful as well. Getting out is like just the beginning because then you get to finally deal with everything that you've had to go through and you get perspective and you put it in context and you really understand um, what you were in and how your life was.
I was living at my mom's for three and a half years because that was my safety, you know, and it just got to the point where I just needed to have my space again. I've probably moved forward a lot the last six months just because I got out on my own and I'm okay and I can do it. So I've always slept on the edge of the bed since I was in the relationship because that's just what I did. And even I carried that over to when I was on my own and the first night in this house um, I was a bit apprehensive because I didn't have mum and her husband to call if I needed them. I woke up in the morning and I was sprawled in the middle of the bed and that was like I was so happy and excited because that was huge because I hadn't done that in years. So I knew that, yeah, we've done the right thing and moving forward. With that education, with service providers, etc., it does make more accountability because there are people watching, there are people talking, there are people learning, so therefore they, they have to maintain a standard. Not until I put him on that list of people that can't work with people with disabilities anymore. I put him on that list because if he did that to me and I'm verbal, what's he going to do to other people that aren't verbal? Nobody else has to work with him. I'll feel threatened by him again. Well, I had initially been assaulted. The police actually took it into their own hands. They prosecuted him and um, all that kind of stuff. And there was an AVO in place, which was put in place pretty much straight away. So that was probably six months after that he was sentenced. I employ my own staff now. I don't let um, anyone in that I don't feel comfortable with. And I also don't have... I have... Um, Female only staff members now. The education taught me that it wasn't my fault because you feel, and particularly if you've got children, you feel so guilty and you're like, you can't forgive yourself. I started feeling not stressed. My health started to get a lot better. I was not um, pressured into things that I, want, I didn't want to do. You know, ever since then, I started getting stronger, powerful. I started finding out things about my Aboriginal. Um, side of the family as well. I came to the conclusion in those early days that it wasn't my shame to carry. Um, so to give, put that back on him, I thought, I've got, to, I've got to vent, I need to get this out. And I thought, oh, I'll do a Facebook page. And it was anonymous and I didn't even expect anyone to, you know, but I was just sharing things that I thought were inspiring and that would help me. Um, and slowly it's just got people and more people and more people who have been through their own traumas and actually women with disabilities taught me about human rights and that was so huge if I'd have known my human rights back back then I would have immediately recognized when they were were being violated no I just sometimes it feels like it's not going to get better you're not going to feel better but you do I promise you do as long as both um, people are happy in the relationship and they're both getting what what they want from the relationship. Just make sure you, you want to be there, make sure that no one else is making you be there. There is people out there that would believe people and women, with a dis even with a disability, without a disability, if they are going through trauma, domestic violence, they will believe them definitely. They will. And that's why we need to get it all out there for those women who are going through the domestic violence now to do something about it if they want to feel free as a bird, like me. Thanks to all the women who contributed to this video. I want to thank all the women who have contributed to this video, who have shared their experience and their story. I really celebrate their strength and their resilience and their wisdom. And I know that we're all going to gain from hearing about what's been important for them in getting safe. What we know is that women feel stronger by sharing their story, by being respected and being believed, being listened to, and going somewhere else if the first person you tell doesn't hear you and doesn't believe you. Because of course, we all have a right to be believed. We're the experts of our own story and our own experience. It's together that we are stronger and we're not alone. If you are in Victoria and need help or want to talk to someone about violence and abuse, you can contact 
Safe Steps Family Violence Response Centre, 1800 015 188 www.safesteps.org.au Centre Against Sexual Assault, Casa House, 1800 806 292 www.casa.org.au 1800 Respect, Confidential Information, Counselling and Support www.1800respect.org.au Disability Services Commissioner 1800 677 342 TTY 1300 726 563 www.odsc.vic.gov.au Office of the Public Advocate 1300 309 337 www.publicadvocate.vic.gov.au If you are in immediate danger, call Victoria Police, triple zero. If you would like to know more about women's empowerment and safety from violence and abuse, we suggest you use the video guide. Our right to safety and respect. Produced by Women with Disabilities Victoria, Empowering Women.